Is next, uh, that is uh, exercising uh, people not just uh, in Israel uh, but around this region uh, and further afield. Certainly, uh, they will be um, monitoring uh, the next phase of this um, in Washington. Harald Shorev is a senior researcher at Tel Aviv University's Moshe Dayan Center for Middle Eastern and African Studies. I'm delighted to say he joins us now live from Tel Aviv. It's good to have you, uh, sir. Um, and, uh, you know, I understand and, uh, and, and uh, it will only be um, uh, you know, <laughs> real that people will be concerned where you are about what happens next. Uh, what's, what's your perspective? Well, I must say nothing from what happened since, since yesterday was surprising, not just for me, but for other experts as well. It's all over the, the, the news mm. for the past week. It was quite anticipated, including the, the, the means that the Iranian will use to, to convey their message, namely drones. Uh, I must say the ballistics uh, missiles that they shot was was a, a surprise. However, everything was you know contained. Everything was within those these frameworks of, as you said rightfully before, they did anything to telegraph their upcoming uh, attack. So mm -hmm. everybody will be in positions and be ready. And uh, and of course, so I, I think that the Iranian wanted to convey a message. I think Israel can contain what happened but at the end of the day we need to remember why the iranian did that they wanted us to stop hitting their generals all over the area here while they are orchestrating the the the, the war against that it is already a regional war and at the end of the day if israel will continue uh, taking down hitting those uh, generals it will mean that the the whole iranian effort mm. has failed and this is exactly what I think Israel should do. I mean, not to retaliate heavily, not to do anything at the moment, but just keep on its its war on the the Iranian proxies and Iranian generals in around the, this area. Mm. And it's, uh, you're making a very good point here. There has been much concern and suspicion around this region and wider uh, that the. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been wanting to expand this conflict and many calling out uh, his strategy or the lack thereof, perhaps, in um, the alleged attack on Iranian assets, of course, in Damascus. Um, what do you make of the strategic thinking at the highest levels in Israel at this point? Well, I think we can test it uh, regarding, let's say, the, the Yemenite attacks against Israel. If you'll check the, those, the, the, the way Israel responded or retaliated to the many attacks that came from Yemen, you would see that I, I don't think Israel retaliated even once. Uh, Israel is concentrated on, on those areas that uh, produce the, 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 the direct threats against us, but you know, uh, uh, such as Damascus and, of course, Lebanon. But I don't think Netanyahu want to expand it. But we do take it already as a regional, as a regional war. Of course, it, it may escalate even further. But I think that if we will see that Netanyahu and the, the Israeli government, uh, of course, uh, uh, agrees and, and, and uh, follows uh, President Biden's uh, request, not to escalate the war at the moment, we will see that Israel is uh, acting in a responsible way. Um, th th it, it's a good question there. As I told you, I don't think Israel needs to retaliate at the moment. It, it might be contained as it, as it is. The question at the end of the day mm. is whether Israel will, will uh, keep on its, uh, its, its fight against uh, the, the Iranian uh, commanders all over the area operating the war against us. Mm. Yeah, that's fascinating. The absence of a political path forward is absolutely an aggregating, uh, an aggravating factor here. That those are the words uh, of one regional analyst, um, and the reaction and response that we are seeing from the U.S. and Israel's <laughs> friends, at least if not allies, uh, in this region is very specific. Um, 
they are not naming Iran in its aggressive approach towards uh, Israel overnight. They are saying and repeating that there needs to be a de-escalation in this regional tension, um, a ceasefire in Gaza um, and a pathway for peace. These um, regional friends, as it were, um, not likely to um, stick with Israel at this point, should they not see a sensible response. So this puts the focus squarely back on the conflict in Gaza, of course, and what happens next. Do you expect to see a ceasefire there imminently? I don't see a ceasefire without the hostages uh, being returned. This is a very strong mm -hmm. Israeli and American, actually, uh, demand. Uh, and uh, we do understand that any uh, prolonging of, of the war in Gaza, any anything, even in, if in low intensity, as it is at the moment, at the end of the day, serves Hamas. Uh, so every, nobody wants to, of course, to, infl to, to continue with this suffer, okay? Including not our own uh, people that are that didn't never came back to to their uh, uh, southern communities. Nobody wants to prolong it, but we do understand that without uh, uh, some some sort of a pressure on Hamas, we won't see those hostages back home, and this is what we care about. Um, in regard to to what you said, it's it's very extremely important. It is uh, Israel allies in the area, and this is what we saw last night. We saw actually the, the allies against mm. the Iranian axis at the end of the day. And it, this is, Becky, exactly how it was from the very beginning. Everybody understood that that it's not something just between Israel and, and, and the Palestinian. It is, at the end of the day, a war between Israel and its allies, pro-American allies, against the pro-Iranian forces in the area. Mm. Thank you, sir. It's good to have you. Harold Chorov uh, is uh, with us here on Thank CNN. You,